Uh, hello, Barmak, uh, and hello, uh, viewers. Um, please welcome Barmak Mefta, founder and general partner at Ballistic Ventures. And uh, more importantly, then Mac is known as the father of AppSec, having, you know, getting started with Fortify back in the day and, you know, all the way alien want later. So welcome, Barmak. Thanks, Nikhil. Good to be with you. Great, great. So, Mac, can you share a little bit about your background or like, you know, how you have come here and what's the kind of journey you did to start the Ballistic Ventures? Yeah, you know, I um, as long as I remember myself, I've been in enterprise software. I would say I spent the formidable years of my career at Oracle. Uh, I was there between 1996, 2003. I was fortunate enough to be uh, part of the product organization that essentially um, uh, was in charge of the relational database, which at the time was kind of the vast majority of the organic revenue that Oracle generated. Um, I did a short stint um, helping launch the new application server group inside of Oracle uh, back in 2000 and uh, got to meet, I was very fortunate, got to meet uh, the folks at Kleiner Perkins, uh, more specifically Ted Schlein, who's my current business partner. And um, Ted introduced me to my other business partner, Roger Thornton, uh, and um, they both kind of compelled me to be an entrepreneur, you know, so I switched from being a big company uh, executive to starting a company. And as you indicated, the first company we did, which was incubated out of Kleiner Perkins, was with Roger and Ted called Fortify Software. It was one of the first application security companies out there. In fact, um, you know, the what, what's today known as, uh, as SAST and DAS to some extent and, and the real-time application security protection space, et cetera, were really some of the innovations that we'd created back at Fortify. And so, um, you know, it was an incredible journey. You know, we, um, we ran the company and sold the company to Hewlett Packard in 2010. And I was the uh, GM in charge of the software security products in HP for about a year and a half before uh, taking a company called Alien Vault over, which was a company that was founded in Spain, redomesticated their headquarters to the US, but was a very, very small company when we joined. I joined uh, with Roger and uh, three or four of the other core Fortify folks. And, um, you know, uh, we essentially got the company off the ground um, and uh, provided threat detection incident response to mid-market segment primarily. And that was an incredible journey. Um, our company got acquired in 2018 by AT&T. Uh, subsequently, I became the president of the cyber business inside of AT&T, uh, and uh, which was an incredible experience unto itself. And when I stepped down from that role in 2020, uh, myself, Roger, and Ted had a quick meeting around what we're going to do next. And and the same way Ted had compelled us to be entrepreneurs, um, he compelled us to be venture capitalists. And uh, we were really fortunate because we surrounded ourselves with a small team of folks that we've known each other for a long time. We've worked each other uh, with each other for a long time. And so we got the team together. The team is comprised of myself, Ted Schlein, Roger Thornton, Kevin Mandia. He's, he's one of the founding partners and Jake Sade, who was one of the early um, folks at Lightspeed Venture Partners back in 2000 and uh, got the investing team together and Ballistic Ventures uh, essentially was born about a year and a half ago. And um, we've made 13 investments since then and incredibly active uh, fund right now. Great. No, what an all-star team here and a great experience. And as you mentioned, you started the uh, AppSec industry back there in, in Fortify. And, you know, almost 20 years later, what do you see as the biggest pain point in application security now? Yeah. So, you know, um, I got to say what's really encouraging is just seeing the evolution of uh, application security and how developers have organically adopted security now within the fabric of the software development life cycle. So when, when we started Fortify, that was not the case. It took us you know, a good three to four years to evangelize the need for security and the need for security to be, be built into the fabric of the software as the software was being developed. And so initially, you know, we faced a lot of resistance from the dev community to sort of organically adopt these tools. Um, fast forward about 20 years, 21 years, um, you know, there, there are a number of tools in the SaaS space and the software composition analysis space that are being used up upstream during the development lifecycle, which is awesome to see. So, um, so uh, the adoption of these tools and scanners have, have now been, been organically ingrained within the software development lifecycle. The problem has become 
How do you let developers build secure software, use the tools that they want to use? And, and no one developer, no one organization you're going to find has really standardized on one tool. You know, they they use a variety of tools, you know, from Fortify to check marks to Vericord to Sneak to SEMGREP. Uh, and, and that's awesome. And so, but the problem becomes how can you provide an orchestration platform, a single pane of glass platform to your application security teams so that they have some level of audit control and some level of observability and visibility to what's going on upstream in the software development lifecycle. And uh, so you see the emergence of essentially app, app secops, uh, you know, space, a, a, that, that there's a space called application security posture management that's emerging. And the challenge becomes, how do you bring appropriate orchestration, appropriate uh, vulnerability management, vulnerability categorization, uh, risk management, asset inventory management to uh, this world that is completely decentralized. And I think, you know, the big opportunity in front of us is, um, is the ability to provide that, you know, single pane of glass view downstream to the AppSec teams uh, so that they can have their developers do what they want to do, but at the same time have some level of control around what's going on with their, with their application development, more importantly, with their secure application development. That's fantastic. Thanks. Thanks for sharing the vision. And uh, Nikhil, since uh, we're asking each other's question, I was going to throw one at you. Obviously, you know, we're, we're very proud investors in Armor Code, and it's my honor to sit on your board and just see the evolution of the company. It's been phenomenal. Uh, what is your vision over the next three to five years? You've, you've now been in application security, better part of probably three, four years since you put Armor Code together. How do you see the space evolving? Uh, that's a great question. And, you know, uh, one of the things which you mentioned as a development things and how you want to make security for developers. I started my career at Bell Labs as a developer, and I never cared about security, if you will. And fast forward, having done operations and then coming all the way into security, the whole application security operations kind of gel together. And so that is the trend which, you know, kind of intrigued me. And that's kind of, you know, after talking and working with almost 500 to 700 customers and potentials, we realized that uh, that trend is growing. Now, what happens here is, while the software development has transformed, like from being monolithic application to microservices with no open source to open source, and from you know once a year release to uh, you know several times a day releases, and in fact even the infrastructure is caused a changing from you know being a traditional data center or private cloud to all the way to infrastructure as a code. Now what's happening here is the application slash software security needs to evolve, and what we are hearing is that uh, you know both the application security traditionally you will have three interfaces you'll have application security vulnerability management and you know DevSecOps. there was three siloed initiatives in a lot of large companies and you would need several tools and there has been a lot of tools proliferations if you will and what we are seeing and you know we are getting great success you know thanks to our customers and partners several of them are which are fortune 500 fortune 50 and you know several big fours so what we are seeing here is that there is a a need to uh, integrate this platform, uh, all of those threes into a single one. So unifying application security, vulnerability management, and you know, gelling it together with DevSecOps. And that is what we see here as next three to five years, like that's a kind of growth. And uh, you know, a lot of companies moving in that directions and you know, we are super excited and, and you know, feel very proud to be kind of leading that market. I think that's awesome. Yeah, we're completely aligned and uh... And uh, I think um, I think the industry is going to get there much the same way 20 years ago. It, 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 it took a long time to sort of evangelize the need for these development tools to be adopted organically by developers. I suspect what you're articulating is going to be adopted by the AppSec teams here uh, pretty fast. And so uh, anyway, great to be with you, Nikhil. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Parmak.